Hello, today we are going to talk about a little bit about Angular Material. Um, my name's Tracy. You can follow me on Twitter at Lady Leet. Here are a few things I do for the community. And let's just get right into the details. So Angular Material. Angular Material is currently on version 2.0 bid 8. The last release was July 6, 2017. And what they are are material com design components for Angular applications. These components are optimized for Angular. They are built by the Angular team to integrate seamlessly with Angular. So they work really, really, really well. Uh, and they have the material design UI with them. We're going to learn a few things today. We'll get into components and styling, tips on getting started, and just build an app with Angular Material. For this, I'm using the latest versions, Angular Material 2 Beta 8, Angular 4.3.4, and Angular CLI 1.3. Okay, so um, the material library is basically broken up into two pieces, two components, <laughs> one of them being components. Uh, we have a few different components here. Um, they can be categorized as layout, navigation, form controls, pop-ups and modals, buttons, indicators, and icons, and we also have the data table. So styling as well with the material library, you have access to the material design colors, a few default themes that Angular Material will give you, and the ability to create custom themes as well. Here are the available components in Angular Material. A few key ones to note would be the date picker, which has been a long time coming. Uh, the data table, again, very popular, um, really exciting that they recently launched that. A few of my favorites are the progress bar and progress spinner, and um, who doesn't love the uh, the beautiful buttons that uh, Material Design gives you? I really love them with a nice little ripple effect and things like that. So Material Styling, um, there are a few different things to take into consideration here. Again, the Material Design colors that you have. Um, the default themes, the custom themes, and recently there is a typography configuration that you can check out. So I really love using materialpalette.com as a way to choose my colors. Um, here you can just go to the website and you can sort of play around with the different colors, um, see what works, and um, it you can actually download the palette yourself. So uh, Angular Material itself is going to ship with four pre-built themes for you. We have deep purple and amber, indigo and pink, pink and blue gray, and purple and green. You can find these in your node modules folder. So uh, this, that, that will actually be importing directly from the node modules folder into the styles.css if we're going to use the pre-built themes. Custom themes are pretty easy to create as well. If you check out the guides at material.angular.io, you should see them. Same thing with the typography configuration. You have guides at material.angular.io for more information. So let's just get into building an actual application. We are going to be building with material components. I'll try to demo, I think, 12 or 14 of them today. Um, to get started, we just need to create a new application with the Angular CLI. Today we are going to be building the RxJS docs site with this. So um, in order to do this, make sure you have Angular CLI installed globally, and then all you would do is ng-new the name of your application, cd into that application, and um, then go ahead and install your dependencies. To install Angular Material, just go and add Angular Material, and there are a few dependencies of Angular Material. You have the new component dev kit that is dependency. You also have the uh, animations, so animations are for components that have a little bit more of complex animations, um, you'll need the animations, uh, you'll need to install Angular animations for that. And Hammer.js, a few of the different um, components depend on Hammer.js as well. So to do that, you can just yarn add uh, at Angular slash CDK, at Angular slash animations, and Hammer.js. In order to make things a little bit easier, um, what I did was in my global styles.css file, I went ahead and imported the uh, Roboto font that I want to use globally in my application. Additionally, what I did was I went ahead and imported the material icons that I'll be using as well. And I decided for this demo, I'm going to go ahead and 
choose a theme and I'm going to choose the indigo pink theme. So I listed that off right here. Uh, and let's go ahead and talk about a little bit of custom CSS. In case I do want to use the primary and accent colors for different things, I can go ahead and you can go ahead and define this in your styles.css file. Unfortunately, I did have to use important here um, in case I wanted to change specific component types because of the way uh, the material library is built and uh, how specific the actual styles are. So we're going to design, uh, sorry, we're going to demonstrate a few components today. We're going to go through the toolbar, the side nav, the icon, the button, the progress bar, grid list, chips, etc, etc, etc. Let's go ahead and get started. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you that I've already loaded the dummy Angular CLI application here. You'll see over here that we have the Roboto font that is loaded and that's because I already added that into my application. If I go ahead and go into my code, code uh, let's see, alright, let's just open up code over here and what you'll see here is that I have the uh, Angular CLI dummy application with the app components, the CSS, HTML, the testing file, and the TypeScript file. Um, I also have my app module file, which is where basically all the important imports are going to go, where we add things to the provider, provide things to my application, as well as make any declarations that I need. Um, I have have my styles.css file right over here. So you can see that, and this is where I did the imports, and I specified that I want the body of my application to have Roboto font right here. Uh, I also added a little bit of uh, CSS that I think I'll be using later, a few classes. Okay, so uh, let's see. I've also created two components, the about component and the home component in which these are the dummy files that the CLI are going to generate for you. And I've created two services, the team service and the um, operators service. And these are just arrays of data in which I will be using in my application. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, oh, by the way, I also created a routing file as well. And you'll see that I have the home component and about component already specified here. And I've defined my routes over here and the different paths it's going to take. Um, and uh, I've imported that, imported routing from app routing into my app module file and specified it in my imports. Okay, so I think first things first, what we want to do is we want to generate the other two components um, that we're missing. So uh, we are building the RxJS. Um, we're building the RxJS docs site, right? So the two things that I'm missing right now are a team page. So NGGC team, ng generate component team. And it's gonna generate those two, um, it's gonna generate those four files for me. So we can scroll up and see that right here. And it's also updated my app module file. I'm gonna do the same thing. I mean, we probably care about um, operators. So I'm going to go ahead and create an operators component right here. And it's basically done the same exact thing for me. You see that I have operators in team now. And um, I'm going to go ahead and now update my routing file since we have a few more components. So uh, we have the team component now. Team, team.component. And we also have the uh, operators component from operators.operators.component. And then I want to go ahead and, oops, slash operators slash operators.component. So this is why I like to have um, my server running in the background like that so I can see when there's any errors. Okay, so we saved that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and specify the different paths. So here we have the operators component and the path is gonna be operators. 
and uh, we also have the team component over here. So go ahead and save that, and we have team over here. Okay, so now that I have that all set, I can go ahead and actually create interesting things. Um, with the router, of course, we need to have a router outlet. So I'm going to do that in my main app component. Um, let's get rid of all this dummy text and just create the router outlet. Okay, well, actually, I don't need to create spaces. I can just do that. All right, so I see that since I specified the home component to be the default, Com uh, component that it routes to, home works, so I know that everything else works. Now, um, now I can go ahead and get started with actually using Angular Material. So um, I want to create a really nice uh, top bar over here, and then I want to have um, something that I can navigate from. So for that, we're going to use the side nav, and we're going to use a toolbar up here. Um, I just want to show you where to find things in the docs. So if you go to material.angular.io and you click on components, you can see all the different components that are available and what you could potentially use. So um, we are going to use the toolbar. And so you can see this basic toolbar right here. You can click on the source over here and you can see this. I like how when you go like this, it's actually using the tooltip component. It's pretty cool. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, so uh, the basic toolbar, it's just MB toolbar, and then TypeScript, you don't really have anything exciting there. Um, and uh, side nav is another one that we're going to use. So we're just going to go ahead and open side nav, and you can see that it has really nice functionality already built in. Um, so to do all of this, we're going to need a few different things. Um, we're going to need the toolbar as I specified. We're going to need the side nav component. We're also going to need the button. Um, you saw that we had to click a button to trigger the side now. And then we probably want to use MD icon as well. So we're going to import the um, MD icon module. So let's go ahead and go back into our app module file and um, do all that. So um, I what I like to do is I like to um, say where I'm importing from because that way I have uh, basically code is a TypeScript or code, whatever it is, telling me what to do. Um, whatever it is, I'm happy. So MD button module. Uh, and then we have MD icon module. Uh, we have MD toolbar module. Previously, you were able to use the, um, the material module and that would just import everything but because that doesn't allow tree shaking so you have to import these modules um, all just like individually which is okay I mean you just have to do it once so not complaining go ahead and add that to, to my imports array make it look a little bit prettier okay so now I have all those and now I can actually use them. So now I can go back into my app component and um, in order to use the side nav, you actually need to use the side nav container. So we're going to wrap everything into the side nav container. We're even going to put our router outlet in there. Go ahead and save that. Um, I do want my side nav to be full screen, otherwise it's going to look a little funny. Trust me, um, ND toolbar and if you don't trust me, you can do it yourself and not use full screen and then see what happens. Um, I'll show you guys later as well. So, um, oh, actually, no. So, I'm just going to create an MD toolbar and I'm going to say RxJS docs. RxJS docs is probably good enough. And you'll see over here that this is loading and you see this really nice little toolbar over here that says RxJS docs. Okay, so I want to specify the color. So, if you remember, I'm using uh, indigo and pink um, as my uh, default sort of theme and um, I want the color to be accent. Um, that's the pink because RxJS is pink. So let's go ahead and do that. And we should save that and that works out. Um, now, let's see, what else do I want to do? Well, I don't really like the fact that there's no padding over here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this into a div and go ahead and add the router outlet over here. And class is going to be, I think I called it body margin with 50 pixels. So let's go ahead and save that and see if that works. Yay, the home component works. Okay, that's nice. Okay, next step, what I wanna do is I wanna create the actual side nav now that I have the side nav container. So um, that's just MD side nav. 
and go ahead and save that. I need to give this a local template variable so I can reference it later. So I'm going to call that side nav. And um, here I'm going to, I want a side nav to open up and then have like a list of the different uh, places I can route to. So um, in order to do that, I'm going to use the stack toolbar. So in order to use a stack toolbar, the first row is always going to be a span. Um, the span we can call home and we can add the router link directly on that and we can just say that that's going to be default. And then um, everything after that toolbar row is what we're using. So if I go ahead and save that uh, router link equals, um, we probably care about operators, right? So operators um, and we'll call this operators. Go ahead and save that and let's just go ahead and repeat that for other things like we care about the team probably, right? Go ahead and save that and then we're going to do the same thing and we're going to have the about page as well. About, okay, go ahead and save that and um, well, I mean nothing broke which is nice but now we actually need to access the site now that we created. So um, this is the site now right here. And then this is the toolbar, right? This is the toolbar that we created right here. Let's just go ahead and add a little button to it. So um, to do that, we're going to use the MD button. And it's a button, MD button. Um, and inside that button, so you can see that there's actually a button that's been created. Or you can't really see it because like, this is nothing there. So MD icon is what we're going to use as well within that button. Because I want to use an icon and for the icon I want to use the menu icon because that's the nice little hamburger menu so let's just go ahead and make sure that that works I believe that no why aren't you working MD icon MD button oh there it is it was just the internet all right so now we have this really nice button here it has a nice little ripple effect it has a really nice hamburger icon here um, but it's obviously not doing anything, so let's go ahead and add a click event to it. Click equals, um, and I'm just going to toggle the side nav. So I called my side nav, side nav up here. So click equals side nav dot toggle. Go ahead and save that. And what should happen is now, after it refreshes, I should be able to click on it. And I see this. Okay, so that is ugly. Why is that so ugly? MD toolbar row. I think it's just the internet. I mean, I could be wrong. That's just really weird. What exactly happened there? Um, MD toolbar row, MD side nav. Oh, do you know why? Because I didn't add this into an MD toolbar. So I need to create an MD toolbar and then wrap everything in that. Um, because if everything's not in an MD toolbar, then it doesn't really make sense. So let me go ahead and save that. And if I click on this, there we go. So we have the nice little thing. You can see the route's changing right here. I'll close the console since we don't really need that. Um, and, you know, operators works, right? Everything works. Okay. So now that we have that going on, so let's just recap. We use the toolbar over here. We use the, the stack toolbar right over here. We use the button right over here. We use the icon right over here. Um, and we use the side nav, if I didn't already say that. Okay, so that looks nice. And now let's go ahead and make the home component look nice as well. So I'm going to go into the homecomponent.html file. And uh, let's just create a little, like, welcome to the RxJS docs. Okay. Go ahead and save that. Um, and then probably, oh, you know, by the way, what I want to do as well is I want this to be everything to be center aligned. So I can go back into my app component and I can say center align. I already defined that previously and everything will be center aligned. Yay! Okay. So let's go ahead and delete homework since we don't need that anymore. Um, now let's go ahead and explain a little bit about exactly what RxJS is. So I can just go into the reactivex.io page and I can um, copy this explanation of what exactly RxJS is. 
Um, I probably want this to be like a little bit pretty as well. So I can add an image here. And I've already added an image slash image slash wait. It's in the assets folder slash image slash rxjs.png. And this is rxjs logo. And if I save that, I should be able to see, okay, that's really nice over there. Um, this probably it needs a little bit of class of um, margin, margin top. 10 to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, and now this is a work in progress, right? So this is going to be like the full documents. So I am just going to um, create, you know, I'm going to create a little like, well, let's, let's go ahead and um, say this is still a work in progress that you can contribute. Go ahead and save that, and then let me go ahead and create another div, and um, I'm going to use a progress bar. So if I go into the material docs, and if I look up the different progress items that you have, progress components, you have the progress spinner, which you could potentially use, or the progress bar. Now if you go ahead and view the source, you'll see that this progress bar specifically is in, uh, the mode is indeterminate, um, but you can also do determinate if you want. Um, and specify the value. And let's see, this is the TypeScript file, really. So um, let's go ahead and do that. So um, I need to use the crop progress bar. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my app module file and let's go ahead and import that in the progress bar module. Go ahead and save that in the progress bar module. Save that as well. I can go back into my home component um, and then I can say MD progress bar. There we go. Oh, actually, this doesn't matter. And then we can say um, mode equals indeterminate. Go ahead and save that, and you'll see that now it's indeterminate. And I can also specify a color if I want. So I can say color equals accent if I like. Okay, there we go, it's nice and pretty. And if I do want to just change the value, let's say I want my value to be 10, value equals 10, um, it defaults as a terminate, so you can see that this is 10% right here. But I don't like that as much as I, as I like indeterminate, so we'll go ahead and do that. Um, okay, so now I'm just gonna create another little button here, and um, I'm just going to have this as the uh, MD raised button, and we're going to specify the color, and we're going to say we're going to oh, let's use a primary color since I haven't used a primary color in a while, um, and we're going to say click here to see the team. And um, now I'm going to give the button a router link, and that's going to link to the team page. Go ahead and save that, and what I should be able to do, there we go, it routes to the team works. But obviously I need to add a little bit of padding over here, so let's just go ahead and do that. Equals margin top 20, save that, that should look nice, okay. So now let's go ahead and work on the team page. Um, now, if you remember, I created a team service, right, with basically uh, names, commits, a complement, and images. So in order to use this service, I need to make sure that it's imported in my app module file. So if I go here, um, I can check, and I haven't actually created those imports yet. So let me go ahead and do that. Um, import um, the team service from team.service. And um, I created another one, if you remember, for the operator. So I'm just going to go ahead and import that as well. So this from operators service. Go ahead and save that. And then I need to make sure to um, add it to my providers over here. So team service and operators service. Go ahead and save that. And it should work now. I should be able to use the data. So, um, oh, I need to also actually go into my TypeScript file and I need to import 
whatever I'm using. So for this, for the team, it's, it's team service from team.service. Go ahead and save that and then add it to my constructor over here. Public, um, we'll call it team data and that's going to be the team service. Go ahead and save that. Okay, now that should go ahead and work. Now I can go into my HTML file and I can create a nice H1 header and I can say um, check uh, the ArcsJS team. Now this is not all the contributors nor is it like the most important people. I just randomly picked um, eight names from the GitHub file or the GitHub um, repository. So uh, just to give you guys an example of how this works. So um, in order to uh, display the RxJS team, I want to use a few different components. Um, I think I want to display a few pictures, and I'm going to go ahead and use the grid for that. So I need to make sure to uh, import that. I also am going to use the list, the MD list as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and import the MD list module, and then I'm going to import the grid list module as well. Go ahead and save that and make sure to add it here MD list module and then MD grid list module. Okay, um, that should work. Well, nothing's broken, so I'm going to assume it works. And let's go ahead and go back into the team.html file and um, let's go ahead and say, like, uh, let's just add a little image here. Or actually, I don't want to add an image yet. I'm going to go ahead and create the grid. So the grid is in a grid list always, um, and there's grids, tiles in each thing. So um, I can add an image here and uh, assets slash image slash lush dot jpeg speaker, or not speaker image, it's called um, contributor image. Uh, and in order for grid list to work, you need to specify the number of columns. So I picked eight people, so I'll say um, a row of two with four columns. So you can see that Ben pops up there. So that's actually working. Now what I can do is I can simply use ng4 to iterate over the data. So ng4 and then um, let uh, image of, we call it team data. Um, and then the array was team, I believe. Oh, yeah, so that worked. Yay, hi, Ben. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and change it so it's not so many Bens. And we'll say image.image, .image because that's the, the name I gave it in the array. And if I go ahead and save that, you'll see that uh, the eight people I chose are over here. This one is broken for some reason. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go into the team service and it's because Matt's name is spelled wrong over here. Uh, let's go ahead and go back into that team component.html file and everything should work. There we go. Now I want to go ahead and list off the contributions that they've made. So um, list of contributions. Go ahead and save that and um, I'm going to use the MD list component. Uh, MD list com consists of MD list items. I love this because you know, and we can just say test here and you'll see that test pops up. So that works out. Um, let me go ahead and use ng4 again for the different list items. Um, equals let per person of team data.team and I think it's person dot person maybe. Person commits and complement. Okay, so uh, that actually did work. So we have a list of people here, and now I can just uh, you know Ben Lush has person dot commits commits on the RxJS project in GitHub. And we have a compliment, so person.complement. Oh, I love it, hello says. Okay, there we go. So Ben Lesh has 
650 wood kibbits on the RxJS project in GitHub. He's so cool that polar bears freeze around him. He's so cool that polar bears freeze. Does that make sense? Who knows? Um, I stole it from Yelp. I think it's polar bears wear sweaters around him, but polar bears can do whatever they want around Ben. Okay, so we have a pretty nice um, team page now. Now let's go ahead and get into, uh, let's see, we have the home page, we have the team page, and now we just need operators, obviously, because that's important. So to display these operators, I'm going to go ahead and use the, um, we're going to use the grid again, but we're also going to use really nice cards, the MD cards. So in order to do that, I need to go into my app module file again, and I need to go ahead and import that. So import, oops, not import, over here. Um, just need to add it over here, MD card module. Go ahead and save that. Add it to my imports over here, MD card module. Save that, and um, then I can go into my... Oh, um, I'm going for the operators, right? I did create a service. So I have the operator service here. And if you remember, I provided it to my app right here. Um, but I need to go ahead and go into the operators TypeScript file and make sure, oops, operators component TypeScript file, there we go. Um, and import the service. So operators service from operators.service. Go ahead and save that and uh, add it to my constructor over here. So public operator data operator service. Save that. Um, let's see, what else am I doing? Well, I guess now I can actually use the data. So I can go into my HTML file and I can say um, list of operators. Go ahead and a list of operators. I think so that works over there. And um, I'm going to use the MD grid again. So this time I'm going to have the number of columns be two. And MD grid tiles. Have the grid tiles right there. Um, and then inside that, I'm going to have an MD card. So I'm going to use that card component. Um, MD card has a title if I want a title, so I do want that. Um, I can say test over here, and then uh, I also want MD card content as well. And I can say content. So you can see that a nice little card is showing up over here, and it's trying to do two columns. Um, that doesn't look very pretty, so I'm going to add a little bit of styling um, on the actual card. Um, we'll say uh, class equals card height and width. And let's go ahead and go into my styles.css file. And I can just add this over here, card height width. And I'm going to say the height is going to be uh, 175 pixels. And the width is going to be uh, 300 pixels. Go ahead and save that, and you'll see that that looks really nice over there. So let's go ahead and go back into our operator's HTML file, um, and um, we're going to use ng4 again. Uh, we're going to use it on the, oh, let's see, in the grid tile, I think. So ng4, um, let operator of op operator data dot operators I believe I called it. Let's go ahead and go into the operator service just to make sure I have an operators an operator and details. Okay so operator and details. Okay so um now I probably want operator dot operator here, and I probably want operator dot details here. 
go ahead and save that and you'll see that now we've created a really nice um, we have these really nice cards and we have these very specific, like uh, operators a few of the different operators that you can use in RxJS so it looks pretty um, I like it um, now let's just go ahead and finish this off by creating the about page um, let's see so for the about page let's go ahead and go to the about component um, and we will create a header again about this app I like exclamation marks um, and we will just stick all our content in a little card and say uh, this was to demo Angular material but if you'd like to help with RxJS docs, please email me, which please do, tracy at this dot dot co. Okay, so that looks nice. Um, I do want to add, um, I mean, we can do like two other really silly things. So in Angular Material, um, you saw that really nice tooltip that I liked. So in order to use the tooltip, um, and um, we can even use this, uh, not, like, where's this tab? There's tabs over here, right? So in order to use this, if you remember that we yarn added the um, animations, uh, Angular animations, but what I didn't do, um, which is basically, and it's getting started over here, I did this yarn add Angular animations, but I did not import. So I'm going to go ahead and do this in my app module file. App module, and I'll go ahead and import that over here. And I want to add it to my imports, this browser animations module right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Go ahead and save that. Make sure I don't break anything over here. Looks like nothing's broken. That's nice. Okay. So now what I can do is I'm going to use the tooltip and the tabs. So I'm going to go back up here to Angular Material and the tooltip module and the MV tabs module. There it is. I'm going to add it to my imports. MV tabs module and MV tooltip module. Oops, and the tool tip module. Go ahead and save that. So if I go to my about, then I can simply add something, like in the MD card, I can say MD tool tip equals no really, please email me. And then if I save that, I should be able to mouse over this darn thing. Once it reloads. You gonna load? You gonna load? There we go. Woo! No, really, please email me. Ha! Ah, it works. Okay, so um, I can also create, a, like, I mean, just to show you one more component, um, we can do the um, MD tab. Oh my god, this is so great, because I forgot, I didn't even know what it was, and I just said MD tab group, and then it worked. Oh my gosh! And um, MD tab, so each, yeah, obviously, the tab group is made up of tabs, um, and, um, well, that doesn't really give me anything, but I can always check the docs, and I can go to the different components, and I can go to the tab. Tab, 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 tab. Okay, so I can view source over here, and I can see that I need a label and then content. So, uh, label, label equals, uh, I love. No, really, I do. And RxJS. Isn't this tab thing cool? Let's make sure that this looks okay. Okay. So if I go ahead and save that, you'll see that it says I love RxJS. No, really, I do. This tab thing cool. I mean, it is pretty cool. It doesn't look very beautiful, um, but I mean, it's cute. So you know, let's go ahead and delete that. But that is how you use Angular Material. I want to go ahead and get back into this. Um, in the GitHub project, you can actually 
see the different things that uh, the team has planned. So if you go to, let's see, you go over here, you have available features and this different specific documentation. Um, and then down here, you have the in progress plan and non plan features, which are listed right here. Uh, let's talk about Flex Layout. Thomas Burleson, who is the Angular Material 1 lead, um, has a really amazing um, app for demos of Angular Flex Layout, so you should definitely check that out when you get the chance um, to use it. It's pretty amazing, right? So, uh, and then also I want to talk about Angular Component Dev Kit. So on July 6, 2017, with the release of Angular Material 2 Beta 8, um, the Component Dev Kit was released. And what it is, is it's Angular components without the material design, which allow for building blocks for UI components. So this is amazing because you don't need the material design um, styling right but you can actually take advantage of these components like the new data table for example and get features automatically like accessibility text direction uh, platform detection and dynamic component instantiation so there's a lot more coming with angular material be on the lookout very very excited about this component dev kit um we learned quite a few different things today most exciting i think was going through the different components that we were able to use and um, I'm always available on the internet, so if you would like to message me, chat with me about anything, you can find me everywhere at Lady Elite. Um, and besides that, I hope you enjoyed the screencast.